Welcome to Fandemonium, where if you love something, we love you. And today, I am so excited to have Adam Conover with me here. Thank hello, you. Hello, hello. He does a show that you guys should check out. It's called Adam Ruins Everything, and he does. Take your most deeply held misconceptions, and he will blow your mind with truth bombs. Yeah? Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty accurate <laughs> summary, yeah. <laughs> We're going to get to all those things and more in just a minute, but first, intro graphic. <laughs> So as we have been discussing, the purpose of your show, amongst other things, is to humorously no dispel problem. myths and misconceptions. So with that in mind, we're going to challenge you to a game of urban legends. Sure. I'm going to name three urban legends. You'll tell me if there is any kernel of truth in them at all, and if so, what it might be. Yeah, well, I, I haven't heard what these are, so I don't. I may not know for sure. You I'm may, not an expert on all urban legends. I kind of hope you don't. If, I might just wing it and tell you if it sounds like uh, if it sounds like BS to me. Can I say? Can I curse in full? You absolutely. I'll, I'll just wing it and say if it sounds a little bullshitty. And if but. it sounds bullshitty, you can make up some bullshit and turn about where it came from. We're open to that. <laughs> I got all of this off the internet, so what okay. the hell do I know? All right, so one of the most popular coke lore legends, there's an entire, I guess, area of lore that is called coke lore. Coke lore? Coke lore is that if you leave a tooth in the cup of a Coca-Cola overnight, it will dissolve by the morning. Oh, yeah, I don't think that could possibly be true. But do you do you have a sense of where this the kernel of truth in this rotten tooth is? Well, people love to believe that like it, the ur urban legends that do well are ones that like fit a belief that people already have, you yeah. know? So people believe that Coke is very bad for you and that it's like, you know, tastes kind of acidic. So they believe it like it seems kind of chemically. So it's very easy for people to believe that it has like magical chemical properties, you know? Um, and they were once called cocaine. Uh, yeah, it, we, I mean, there was like some kind of, yeah, like there was, yeah, there was like originally like coca leaf in it or yeah. whatever, but yeah, like it's, it, it's, you know, that's plausible to people and they want to believe that. I mean, Coke is bad for you, right? Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean it's like, you know, it's actually not that acidic, you know, that it would, I, I'm sure it's bad for you. It wouldn't dissolve a tooth overnight. Well, I was thinking if it dissolved a tooth overnight, what might it do to your soft tissue of your intestines? But you know what's weird? What it can do, it's can, if you put a little bit of Coke into your lungs, laundry if you have like oil or blood stains it can help remove them you can yeah i know it's weird it can people use it mechanics use it to clean up corrosion on batteries mm -hmm. um, this so is good it the does, carbonation right it seems like seltzer yeah, would, would be more helpful than coke well yeah you don't but need the sugar in the smell is good i don't, I don't know <laughs> i think it's partially the carbonation and i think it's partially cocaine and magic um as all good things in life are mm -hmm. we can agree on that so the next one is all right there is an this one so much. There is an axe wielding bunny man wandering the DC countryside terrorizing school children. Currently? Just you said whenever. it is. It's, it's, it, a, it's an urban legend that the bunny man is out there. There's an urban legend that it's that it's currently happening? That the bunny man is going to get you. All right. I don't, I, I mean, <laughs> probably be national news if it were true. So, uh, so I'm going to say not true that there's no current bunny man, like a man wearing bunny ears or like a, like a full bunny outfit and an axe, a full bunny outfit with an axe. And he's, and he's killing people right now. That's he's, the urban legend. Don't know if he's he's out there, he's out he's there with an axe. every day. There's yeah. people dying, being killed by a bunny man, I don't know that they're dying. I think but this news has only there. gotten out through urban legend. <laughs> it's only like through the whisper machine that, that people are hearing about it. No reporters interested in the story. Not at all. I think that I find that unlikely. <laughs> I find, find that, that hard unlikely. to believe. Yeah. The Colonel fun to think about, <laughs> but just because things are fun to think about doesn't make them true. Make a great movie. The kernel of truth is, I guess there was in the 1970s, there was a in 1970 actually, there was a couple parked and a man in a bunny suit came out with an axe and was like, you're trespassing and threw the axe and it shattered their windshield, but nobody died. And so I think that ever since then, there's been this rumor of an axe wielding bunny man, because why would you not want to imagine that there's an axe wielding bunny man? Is this a real rumor? Did you hear this rumor? Or is, did, did you read this on a list of urban I, legends I, on a website? I, fully, I don't mean to call you out. No, but call me out. No, I'm totally <laughs> full of shit. I was doing this last night on the internet where I get all my facts. <laughs> I'm just saying, are there people are there people out there who are currently worried about the axe wielding bunny? Man? I feel like there are the next one I can speak to from a person. I didn't grow up in Washington. Mm -hmm. I do think that it is a vortex, uh, probably a portal to the Hellgate. I'm pretty sure because I've been there and it feels like that yeah. to me. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was an axe wielding bunny man, but I yeah. didn't grow out there, so I don't know. <laughs> the next one I do know what the kids say. Oh yeah? Yes. You've heard this one first I've heard this one first hand. Because I grew up in New York City. 
The tunnels beneath New York City are mm. filled with man-eating alligators and oh, yeah. or cannibalistic humanoid, humanoid underground dwellers, aka Chud. This is the Ninja Turtles you're describing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, this, well. This is a cla- this is the this oldest is the Lurpin classic. legend the, about the New York. Yeah. One, right? Yeah. I mean, that's just that's like a thing that kids say to scare each other, you know, because yeah. it was like the, about like flushing snakes and stuff like that, yes. and et cetera. And there's the and you know there is this idea of the New York City sewers is like this vast unexplored area that's full of you know Horrors creatures and, and things. Terrible yeah. things. But it's weird how much people exoticize it. Like there was a there was a book a couple years ago. Uh, called like the mole people. The mole people. And there was and a movie it, Dark Days. Yeah, and it was about like, oh, there's like a city of mole people that live underground. They have their own society. That's one way of describing. You'd also describe it as like there's some very unfortunate homeless people yes, who live in the who absolutely. live in you know who who live in some uh, neglected areas. Like it, so, we exoticize and treat it as though it's this magical area. When you know what I mean? Yeah, like it's, I do. It's, it's it, the Dark Days documentary. I think actually took the latter point of view, mm-hmm. which it was sort of exploring the homeless population that lived in the tunnels, yeah. and he went down and he lived with them for three months. Yeah. Um, but I did grow up in New York, and we were told each other when I was growing up, don't, when you're taking the subway, never get too close to the tunnels, because somebody's going to grab you and kidnap you, <laughs> and pull you down to live in the cu- tunnels forever. So that was a real thing. <laughs> and I still kind to of believe it. Tunnels like, forever. like, it was so, yeah. it was said so, like, you would be a, instead, yeah. like, an Indiana mole woman That's a very York. common childhood feature fear for a uh for like something to come out and grab you yeah right when i was a kid i thought that if you um if i watched the toilet flush all the way that a witch would come out i don't know and and steal me away a witch like on a broomstick i imagine (laughs) so i would flush the toilet and i would run out of the bathroom as fast as i could because i was scared i was scared um and that was a real that was a real thing i thought so like i think all i think all kids think that Stuff is always going to come out and grab them in all situations. Yeah, but especially from the toilet. There, so that rumor started about the alligators. Mm-hmm. I, I, the, the New York Times, I think it was in 1935, ran a story that some boys pulled a six-foot alligator out of the sewers and then beat it to death with um, shovels as they were shoveling the driveway. I know it's a nightmare. I'm like, the poor alligator. My God. I don't know if it's true or not, but supposedly that's where it... And then it yeah. was it got reinvigorated in the 70s when there was this rumor that a bunch of people had come back from Florida with baby alligators and then inexplicably mm-hmm. flushed them down the toilet where mm-hmm. they grew and lived to terrorize the underground yeah. realms of New York. And there's a movie called Alligator about that that's amazing because... <laughs> This is such an amazing movie. They built models uh-huh. to, for like the size of the city, and then they put a real alligator in it to make uh, it look bigger. That's <laughs> wonderful. That's great. That's wonderful. That's classic monster movie making. Classic. Build a little miniature, and then and then have a small animal, and say yeah. the animal grew big. Mwah. Yes. Love it. Yeah. But these are the things that nightmares are made of that make you look in the toilet before you flush your <laughs> business, I suppose. All right. And with that, we've earned a random bit of internets. segment let's play debunkerizer so here's where we're going to name the first sort of myth or idea or story that was debunked for us that blew our minds and the first time we did it to somebody else just exploded their brain with a truth bomb Mm -hmm. i still haven't thought of one for myself oh no i'll start then (laughs) please go ahead (laughs) i'll start us off so the first time i did that to somebody else i mean i think i probably did this to him continually throughout our childhood because for whatever reason i have the most gullible older brother in the world and i believed nothing um i came out of the womb a cynic so he had a big crush on one of the patty dukes on the patty duke show which we used to watch in rewinds and i just ruined his life by telling him that it was the same person because he really disliked the other one and he's like no my dream woman's not real that's um, what he he literally he literally thought that the one he thought that Patty Duke was two he thought it was yeah. two identical cousins like he, I think he bought the entire premise of the show and then we did it again I did it again with the Parent Trap and I'm like is it gonna be like this every time How did he feel when he found out about Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen He was like that he was like that that one th- little girl was two different people I think by that time he'd grown a little bit cynical about twins and now I'm pretty sure he's so scarred that he doesn't think that twins are a real thing at all I think he thinks it's a worldwide optical illusion <laughs> just to mess with his head. 
outside. <laughs> um, uh, I remember when I f first realized that people who were like asleep in a TV show didn't didn't fall asleep for real. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I was like, oh, they're probably just. I was like, what, eight years old, and I was like, oh, they're just keeping their eyes closed and pretending. They didn't. They didn't wait for them to fall asleep before they started the cameras rolling. Yeah. You figure that stuff out quickly. You do. That's actually the first. The first time. The first thing that really blew my mind was when, because I loved movies as as a kid and TV, but I loved movies, and it was when I realized that they weren't actually shot in sequence. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was some like, I, I, I there was some kind of like behind the scenes thing yeah. that I happened to see. You're like, oh, they shoot out of order. Yeah, and I was like, how does that even work? <laughs> like, how do the actors know what's happening in the story? And they, this hasn't happened yet, so how do they know? And it was, it really, like, now it seems so ridiculous, but at the time, like, I just could not wrap my brain around it. It kind of fascinated mm -hmm. me about the whole process. Here's one that I realized, this was a big, this is a big moment of shock and realization for me, was when I looked as a kid, I'll say this is mine, on the back of a bag of Ruffles, right? Ruffles potato chips. And I saw right there, made by Frito Lay, and I was like, R "Wait, Ruffles are made by Lay? Like yeah. I thought they were competing. <laughs> this is all one company, Frito Lay and Ruffles. That's all one company. What the fuck? You know, as I thought I had seen through the Matrix. And as you a had, in a way, <laughs> you had you'd seen through the corporate Matrix, which is kind of your thing now. Yeah, that was a little a defining bit. Defining moment for a you. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, it's like, oh, there's a story here. There yeah. wasn't. It's just Lay's put yeah. a different name on a bag. But as a kid, you think that every name is like a separate. You take the brand names very seriously, yeah. and you think that it's actually different, like groups of people making each one. I think as a kid, you also like the idea of like uncovering Nancy Drewing it and uncovering mm -hmm. a big mm -hmm. conspiracy. We used to For make sure. up fake conspiracies that were happening at the local library mm -hmm. to like investigate. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So was there? Did you? Because on your show, mm -hmm. you're obviously debunking things left and right, and it's it is you make a joke of how much how angry people get about that. Mm -hmm. But do you find that people really do get angry with you in your personal life? Well, I mean, they always had a, up until now. Now it's like a thing I do as a comedy show, and so people yeah. like it because it's like part of my like personal brand, you know. But um, but yeah, I mean, people used to really hate. It. I used to like correct teachers in school and yeah. stuff like that. So it was the first time you did that, like corrected a teacher. I mean, I just remember going like. Uh, uh, you know, like a kid writing on, I'm uh, sorry, a, a teacher writing on like the whiteboard, like a, like a website address. I was a big internet kid yeah. and they wrote www.whatever.com and they're like, now make sure to write the www. And I was like, actually most web servers don't, you don't need to write the www. They'll insert it by, by automatically. And he was like, I think you're wrong about that. I was like, no, I think I'm right. And he's like, all right, Adam, let's just move on. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like a lot of that. Um, so, so were you uh, like Hermione Granger, like, I know, I know, I know. And then you sort of had to develop a sense of humor to make it work. Yeah, more or less. I mean, it's mo it's more it's less. I know, I know, and me. I've always been a person where if something strikes me as kind of bullshitty, like mm -hmm. I always just sort of s say, I don't know about that. You know, like yeah. that seems weird. That, that's a little hard to believe, and um, people don't like that. You know, yeah. because it it hits the brakes on whatever they were talking about. You know, and and you know, even in like school, like a lot of what you are told is, you know, like just common wisdom or, or urban legends or, or things that teachers, you know, ingested and didn't think critically about themselves and right. were repeating to you, you know? So that was sort of my, like, through the looking glass moment was when I realized that, oh, they were just sort of repeating nonsense too. Yeah. Like, I had teachers that would just, you know, tell us, like, urban urban legends, you know, right. um, uh, about, I, a teacher told me that, like, you know, Catherine the Great, you know, the, the yeah, Empress yeah. of Ru Russia. Yeah. There's an urban legend that Catherine she, the Great there's, there's an urban legend that she died when she, when she had sex, had with, a sex with a horse. Had sex with a horse, yeah. yeah not true but yeah. I had a teacher who told us that because it's what a good story to tell a bunch of 10th graders yeah I mean I think everybody knows that's not true and I'd say it's an amazing story to tell a 10, <laughs> a ten year old though. that is so inappropriate yes like, yes so many levels that is amazing was it a history teacher it was a history teacher that's awesomely yeah. yes. terrible yes yay public school system yes yes um, it was but, a very engaging class but yes a lot but, of things weren't true but good for you I I, I love the show it, it, it is I find it very informative um, I do find it confronting the very first thing you tackled this season was giving mm -hmm. and challenging people to think about hey don't just assuage your conscience by thinking You've, you've done something good make sure it's actually doing any good yes so good for you well done yes, sir very important thank you and at this point mm -hmm. we will recommend something on streaming so normally we just recommend anything that you like on streaming a movie or a tv show mm -hmm. but i'm gonna force you to recommend something specific be either something that upholds a misconception debunks one mm -hmm. or is kind of a whistleblower like the good job of doing the truth 
Um, well, uh, I'm a very big fan. I'll just say briefly, I'm a very big fan of John Oliver's show. I th- <laughs> oh my god! Um, uh, I think it's really, it's really, really great. And um, it's the best you know, thing it's, ever, it, besides it, yours. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like. I, 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 you know, dare to think we're we're sort of doing things in, in similar wheelhouse. No, you are. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, but you know, I really admire. It's a really wonderful synthesis mm-hmm. of comedy and journalism. Um, uh, but people know about that already. What I'd like to recommend that's a little bit um, more off the beaten path is um, uh, PBS has an incredible documentary series called Frontline. Mm-hmm. Um, um, that uh, is is great. It's like these hour documentaries that are all on a different subject, all by different directors. So some of them are very, some of them are very directed. Some of them are more like news documentaries. Yeah. Um, but it'll be everything. You know, they uh, we you know they did an episode. Uh, we, there's an episode of our show that we do about forensic science, about how bad forensic science is, mm-hmm. and what sort of blew you know that issue open for us was watching um, a, a frontline documentary called The Real CSI about how terrible fingerprint uh, analysis is and um, uh, you know techniques like that. Uh, and the great thing is, it is all available for free on the PBS app, which I think is available on Roku and Apple TV and all of those, which is like a sort of neglected app. Like if you download the PBS app, there's so much incredible content. On it oh that's my god! Free. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and you can. I think you, they have. Is Frontline on Hulu as well? I know that the the News Hour is on Hulu. Oh, is it? Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, check out check out Frontline. It's like a yeah. new. If you like, see, you know, I documentaries. It it's a new awesome documentary yeah. every week. It's really great. I believe it's on. I believe it's on Hulu. Um, and I should say, it's the only place you should really get your news. Besides BBC, kind of. Anyway. That's a whole different topic. <laughs> they do good news. Yeah. They're like the last bastion of yes. like, oh my yes. God, this is what an actual journalist sounds like? <laughs> How fascinating. There are literally no clown shows happening in the background. I don't get what's going on. Um, it's really amazing. It's a great series. I agree with you. I heartily endorse your recommendation. Um, I'm going to name a couple of things. I think that we can all agree that the science is maybe not entirely sound in the 2004 Roland Emmerich epic. The day after tomorrow, Mm -hmm. there is nothing there that works other than the magical epicness of the spectacle, which is amazing. However, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson gave the stamp of approval on The Martian. The science is sound, said Neil. I didn't get to see it because we were in production when it came out and I didn't have a chance to go. But um, I mean, uh, in general terms, it's still a movie. Yeah. Yeah. So Uh, you said the science was sound in that one. And Silkwood is a 1983 Mike Nichols film starring um, Kurt Russell, who I adore, of all people, Cher and Meryl Streep. And it's basically about Karen Silkwood, who was a whistleblower, um, nuclear whistleblower, and and was an advocate, union advocate, um, for, she worked in a nuclear plant. And um, she died in a very mysterious car accident, so we'll leave it at that. It's a good movie. I don't know. A lot of times when people like, oh, I died in a mysterious car accident, that implies foul play. But what? How mysterious was I this car accident? I think you should debunk it. <laughs> Most car accidents are not that mysterious. Because the way that people they, so they hit something with their car and they died. Yeah. Well, the way they end <laughs> the movie. The, usually, what happens? The, they imply that she got ran. Off, she got run off the road, right? Uh, because the yes. car is behind her, and it's kind of like the high beams are coming, mm-hmm. and um, they imply that she got run off the road. If she and there you go, you can sort of debunk movies. You can say, mm-hmm. look. This is an implication. We have no facts, people. Yeah. Thank you for coming on oh, today. Thank Where you can for the people me. start? Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday at 10 p.m. on True TV. Also rerun throughout the week. Yeah. Just go look at your guide and skim around. You'll see Adam ruins everything and on you True have clips TV. Clips on the website. We yeah? have clips on on YouTube on College Humor's YouTube yeah. channel and on True TV's YouTube channel. We do clips from the show. Um, and uh, yeah, check it out. It's a uh, it's a great uh, it's a great show. I think I think I'm making it. I like it. I think you should love what you make, and I think it's a great show, too. I Seriously, you learn a lot. It's very entertaining. It will confront you. I think that's healthy for your soul. I agree. I agree. You need to be. You need to have your preconceptions undermined and question your beliefs, as the thesis of the show, anyway. Exactly, and then you can watch a sitcom and tune back out again. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for being here oh, today. Thank you for having Are me. you on Twitter? I am on Twitter, at Adam Conover is where I am. And I'm Roth Cornett on Twitter. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Twitter, do the Snapchat, the Instagram, all of the things. If there are more internet things, I can't handle it. So I'm not going to name any of them. But please do love us, love us, love us. And stay tuned for continued shenanigans on tomorrow's show.
breaking entertainment news, and more, follow at HitFix on Twitter or visit HitFix.com.